uh, welcome today. We're gonna talk about seven steps to abundant listings. And I want you to know a couple things as we get into this. The first is this, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. It doesn't really matter how long it takes. It really doesn't matter. You know, you think about this, and, and every time I teach this, I taught it maybe 60 times last year uh, via webinar all over the US, and I've taught it a number of times in person. And you know, people will constantly ask, well, Cody, how long does it take to use these seven steps to get to um, abundant listings? And of course, the original title was to 10 listings in a month, and of course, other people have used it to get to well beyond 10 listings a month. And I want you to think just for a moment that how long it takes almost doesn't matter. In other words, if you think about it this way, if, um, if somebody were to say, how long does it take to be the best dad that you can be, would it really matter how long it would take? If somebody were to say, listen, how long, how long would it take me to be the very best spouse I could be, it almost wouldn't matter how long it would take. In fact, it might even last a lifetime. It might even take a lifetime. Now, in this, what we've learned is that if you do the seven steps to abundant listings, usually we can get it done in four to six months, and of course, it depends on your desire and your motivation. And so the two things that we can't provide in here are your desire and your motivation. You have to bring that on your own. We, you know, when, I, when this first came about, somebody asked me, they said, um, Cody, if you were to take like, a, like an index card, right, like a little three by five index card, and you were to keep it simple, so simple, Cody, that even you could follow it, that's the way they said it, um, that an agent could take over 10 listings a month and it could be a modeled process, process that could happen over and over and over again, what would it be? And that was, the, that was the, um, the beginning of the seven steps to 10 listings in a month. And where it's gone from, from there, you know, people will say, how long does it take? And of course, it doesn't matter how long it takes. Now, I do believe this, and what I've seen is when someone follows these steps and they take 10 listings, you know, the first time, the first time they do 10 listings in a month, could you imagine if they're used to doing two or three listings in a month, and they go and they take 10 listings in a month, is that going to feel a little crazy? Say yes. In fact, uh, would you do me a favor? Would you look to your left and look to your right? Pick the person you like better. <laughs> if, you're, if you're here with your spouse, that's the one. I'll always help you with this. No, 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 look to your neighbor and say, it will feel crazy. In fact, the first time you go to 10 listings in a month, you might even forget to put one in the MLS. It feels so crazy. <laughs> Been there and done that. The first time you take 10 listings in a month, you might find out halfway through the next month that, oh, you forgot to have the sign installed. And you know what? It's okay. It's okay. You'll make mistakes, you'll have some challenges, and you'll move forward. It's okay. It'll feel a little bit crazy. You know, um, if you're used to driving 40 miles an hour, even 60 will feel fast. And what I've also learned is it's kind of like somebody who goes and sells 10 homes in a month. If they're used to selling two or three homes in a month, and they do the right actions, by the way, if you're taking notes, actions will always beget results. Actions will always beget results. Now, poor actions will probably beget what sort of results? Poor results. Incredible, audacious actions will usually beget what types of results? Incredible, audacious, fantastic actions. Now the challenge is, if you're anything like me, uh, the challenge is not so much for me the, the audacious, crazy actions, it's the amount of time that has to go by between the action and the result. Are you with me? Uh, some of the pitfalls to the seven steps to 10 listings, um, they lie in two things, and those two things, I'll, I'll give them to you, you won't see them on the screen. The first is distractions. The first is what? Distractions. The first is distractions, and the second is expectations. It's expectations. It's the expectation that if I call these people today and I just use this great script, like I take one of Gina Ront, great agent, been an uh, incredible agent, I take one of Gina Ront's scripts and I use this script, it's going to be amazing. Or I take Diana Kokoska's scripts from Bold and I use these scripts and poof, my business is going to blow up tomorrow. And of course what we find is, and we know in our soul that that's not the case. We know that. Like we know that. We know that it takes what? We know it takes time. We know that, though in our brain we want it when? Right now. In fact, I looked down and I thought, man, you know, it, th this should have happened sooner. This should have happened faster. I, I, I should have done better with this quicker. Do you, have, do you know anybody that uh, it seems like everything they touch just turns to gold? Do you know that person? Like everything they touch just seems to work really fast and it just seems to be amazing quickly. I hate that person too. 
just like you. I'm not that person. I'm the person that does it and does it poorly and has to punt and do it again and do it again and then go do it again. And you know, sometimes, probably just like you, I feel like sometimes my greatest skill set is that I won't stop. Do you ever feel that way? It's like, you know, I got a whole bucket of skills that sometimes help and sometimes don't, and the one that always does is that I won't quit. And I'll tell you, if it takes you seven months to do these steps to take 10 listings, then great. If it takes you three months, then fantastic. If you start them right now and you do it less than a month, then keep that to yourself and don't tell us. <laughs> now, uh, step number one is make one listing appointment every day. Make one every single day. And you know, I wish there weren't so many lights pointing this way because I could see your faces better. Because when I teach this in person, here's what happens. When I say that, I go, all right, everybody, here's the deal. Step one, one appointment every day. The people usually go, well, duh, Scooter. <laughs> no, seriously, are you that committed to the fact that lead generation to uncover one listing appointment every day? Now, I would, I would write this down. The truth is you have a listing appointment sitting on your desk every day, and your job is to uncover until you get to it. You see, what does it look like every morning when you go to work and you think, all right, there's a listing appointment sitting on this desk, a listing appointment sitting in this computer, and my job is simply to what? To uncover it, to find it. Now, sometimes that happens early in the day, and sometimes that takes till the the end of the day, and it's okay either way. The truth though is that you have one there. And you know, one of the things I've learned about this, and, and, and I would say this, is that, is that lead generation, lead generation can, can find you a sale. And you know that, you know that in your heart. Though lead follow-up can build you a business. Do you see the difference? And we'll talk about that when we get to step number three and step number four. So this is super easy. I want you to think of it this way. If you don't get the appointment, if you don't get the appointment, then you gotta come back with the sleeping bag. So this is easy on that day that you come in, and let's say it's Monday, and you come in and you make three calls, and I'm sure you've had this day, right? You make three calls and you set an appointment and you're like, man, I am good. I'm the best that's ever done this. This is so easy. This is no big deal, it's a cinch. That's the easy day. The difficult day, which is where the rest of us tend to live, is that what's going to happen is that you come in on Wednesday or Thursday, and then you, you're on like contact 38 or contact 42, and you don't have it yet. That day that you stopped when you had the appointment, you also can't stop the day that you have to go find it. Are you with me on that? This cuts both ways, or it won't work. And what I'm talking about is making the calls, even if it means 10, 20, or 50 calls, it doesn't matter. You keep calling until you have that appointment. And you know what this is based on? It's based on the idea of making it a habit. It's making it a habit. It's a positive habit of great, um, of great activities that will eventually lead to great results. And here's what's gonna happen. You know, here's what also, an, an agent, when we share this, they'll say, well, you know what, Cody, that sounds fantastic. Um, who am I gonna call, or how am I going to get the appointment? And you know, that's important. It's an important question. Though the bigger brother to that question that's more important is why do I want the appointment? Are you with me? In other words, the why supersedes or beats the how. And here's what we also find with agents. When we get too wound up on the how, well, how would I do that or how would I do that? What we've actually found is let's move out of the how conversation and move back to the why conversation. In fact, how many of you out here in this room, when you really want to do something, you move heaven and earth to get it done, say I. Like your brain almost goes on, this, on this, this, this overdrive where you can't even stop thinking about it until you get it done. I know that, I know that. It's like when the new iPhone comes out and you have to go get it. I know the way this works. Now step number two is every single day, every day, how often? Every day. Look back to the neighbor you like less this time. It's always the politicians in the room when it's the, the person they like more, they're like, I like you and I like you the same. It's probably impossible to like them both the same. Look at your neighbor and say, every day, bucko. Every day. Here's the deal with that. Now, this is about a habit. It's about a habit. And I want you to think for a second, what if every day, what if every day you were to see the front door of a for sale by owner or an expired? 
Now, I use for sale by owners and expires almost like a placeholder in the seven steps because I don't know that you have to work FISBOs and expires. I think you can walk right out those doors and build an amazing real estate sales business that funds every dream you have, doing all the business that you'd like to do and never have to work a FISBO or expired. I believe you can totally do that. And you know, we know that to be a fact because people go and do it. At the same time, my challenge on it is that the for sale by owners and expireds are the ones that are telling us that they have motivation. Are you with me? And so my challenge with it is for the agent who's willing to and yet won't. Now, if you choose that you don't want to see the front door of a FISBO or an expired every single day, then you just need a different mechanism to find people that have motivation. Is that fair? I just couldn't write 50 different things on one slide. So maybe what you do is you use your widget on your website for people that, um, that put in their information to find out how much their home is worth like a home valuation tool. And that's the front door you see, and that shows motivation. Or maybe it's someone who's responded to an auto responder or an auto response mail drip system or something else. It almost doesn't matter as long as it shows motivation. Here's what drives me nuts. What drives me nuts is really, really great intentioned agents who say, all right, all right, baby, I'm gonna go do this lead generation. I'm in, I'm in, I'm gonna do it. And what they do is they go out there into the world and they start using great scripts and great dialogues on people that don't have any motivation. And they're doing the right things, they're just not doing it in the right places, and no wonder they don't get the results. And so they go and they, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like looking down a road, and you got 100 homes on this side and 100 homes on this side, and you go, all right, all right, I'm gonna knock on doors. No problem, been done for decades, and it will be for decades more, it's fantastic, there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with it though, in my opinion, is going, all right, 100 doors and 100 doors, I'm gonna knock on all 100 and ask if they wanna sell their home. Over here in the corner, has a little sign that says for sale by owner, and I'm going to <laughs> and go to their neighbor and see if they want to sell. <laughs> Do you get how ridiculous that is? Like we, like we know, we know here in this room, we know in this room in our mind that that's ridiculous. Though how many of you besides me have ever done that in real life, say I? Yeah, of course, I've done it too, I've done it too. You know, you drive by a house and you see a FISBO sign, you go, oh, I should stop. You see a FISBO sign the next day, oh, I should stop. And you keep driving past your neighbor's house, meaning that you should stop, knowing you should do it, and then you drive by one day and you know what sign you see out front. <laughs> Who's done this? You've done this, say I, right? You've done this. And you drive by one day and you see another agent's sign. And you go, dang it. Mom, you know I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times, this is what I do. Now, I'll tell you, I don't even know, I don't even care, I don't even care what you say when you go to their door. The, remember, remember, for sale by owners have a hand in the air saying they wanna sell, expires have two hands, I wanna sell, and I'll pay you. The issue is usually what I find, again, being able to go and coach bold has been amazing. And what I find in those rooms, teaching Diana Kokoska scripts, is that it's usually not a matter of I don't want to do it, it's a matter of I'm not sure I can do it yet. It's a matter of I'm not sure it will work yet. And you know what's so fascinating is the very same agent that tells us in that room, you know, I'm scared or I don't want to or, or I'm just all about service so I don't call FISBOs and expires. Whatever it is that we say, the first time they have three clothes in a month, how do you think they feel about FISBOs and expires? All of a sudden they think they're amazing. They have their money and your job is to go get it. And oh, by the way, you can help a lot of families in the process. You know, I think sometimes we talk a lot about selling and a lot about money and a lot about sales, and I love that. I love that part about our industry. You know what I also love about it is when you get to stop sometimes and realize, wow, I'm really doing something that helps families. I'm doing something that's amazing, and I get to be paid really, really well for that, really well for that. Here's the reality, show up, be in the way of good things to happen. Now, my little rule of thumb on this is every day you see a front door of a FISBO or an expired. Now, here's the reality, if you set a listing appointment every day, by the way, there's usually about 21 or 22 business days in every month. If you set a listing appointment every day, that's 21 or 22 per month. Is there anybody in the room who's ever had a listing cancel on them or a listing appointment cancel on them? Me too. Or here's what happens. As you're using like the prequal script that we teach, you find that you should cancel that appointment. It's not worth your time to be there. It's, it's not worth their time to have you there. This allows you to set 21 or 22 appointments per month, which also allows you, if you're anything like me, you're gonna have some fall apart and that's okay. By the way, when you have an appointment cancel early before the appointment, you understand that that's okay. It's going to happen anyway. 
Now, what I've also learned is that bad news will not get better with age. So I'd rather know right now if we're not gonna have that appointment. That allows you to cancel five or six, leaving you 14, 15, or 16. Now, how many of you, if you were to go on 14 to 16 appointments, would probably start signing eight or 10 per month, say I? And we know that because NAR tells us that. We know that because NAR tells us year after year after year that nearly 75% of all sellers choose the first bozo, I mean real estate agent, who comes to their house. Now, in the world, do, do our database and our customers and our clients and the people out there, or as my MAPS coach says, the humans, the humans out there, do some of them think that all realtors look the same? Say yes. Do we know that that's not true? Say yes. Of course, though in their mind they think that, so there has to be something that differentiates us. And so what I'm saying is one door per day, FISBO or expired. Now, if one of your appointments today was a FISBO or expired, then sweet, perfect, good, that counts. Though if your appointment today was with a sphere of influence, which is awesome, or a referral, which is awesome, then great. It doesn't count. On the way back to the office, you gotta go see the front door of a FISBO or expired. If you don't have an appointment, that's okay. Go to their door. You can knock. I promise you, you will live. I also promise you that the brakes on your car, regardless of the manufacturer, were designed to work within 100 feet of all for sale by owners. <laughs> I know sometimes we'd like to think our brakes won't work in front of them, and though they will. Now here's the deal, no one's home, no worry. Stick a card in the door jam, a little note, a whatever, and that counts as your door. Enough people will be home, enough will contact you, enough that you will follow up with. This whole thing became very apparent to me when I was coaching an agent about 10 years ago, and this agent was scared to death of contacting for sale by owners. Scared. Though we also had a monumental task to pay for for his family. And the moment that task had enough pain associated with it, it was greater than the pain of contacting for sale by owners because he needed business right now. And he said, Cody, I don't have time to wait four months. I need it right now. And we both knew where to go. He called me that morning, it was a Saturday morning, he left me a message, he said, I don't even like you right now. <laughs> he said, I'm sitting in my car and I've never felt so embarrassed in my life. I'm scared to death, I'm literally shaking. He said, and my kids mean more to me, I'm gonna go talk to this FISBO, I'll let you know how it goes. You know how much, you know how much, at that point, it wouldn't even matter what happened at the door. His win is going, are you with me on that? Each one of you have overcome a fear and you know in that moment you're becoming your authentic self. So here's what he does, he goes up to the door, he knocks on the door, knock, 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 the, the lady opens the door, he does this, this is exactly what he does. He hands her a business card like this and he says, hey, I'm a realtor in the area, if I could ever help you, uh, let me know, best of luck. <laughs> That's what he did. Now when he was most of the way back to the car, she said, hey, 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 did you know that she listed her house with that guy that day? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Now, is that a good script or a bad script? <laughs> well, here's the truth. It's better than the script that's not being used by the person who won't go. In fact, it tells us they will work with almost anyone. <laughs> which means there's hope for me and you. Now, did you know from that day forward, he began to list homes left and right? that next year he listed over 75 homes, 30 of which were for sale by owners. He went on to be a fantastic bold coach. If you're writing notes, here's what I'd write. Everybody starts somewhere. And nobody, I mean nobody, starts at the top, which is where you might see them. Here's the deal. If you're gonna do one listing appointment per day that you set, and you're gonna see one for sale by owner or expired door per day, even if all you do is leave a note, even if all you do is knock on the door and do what that guy did and, leave a, and leave a, you know, give a card and run away, if you erase, you have to replace. So if one day you don't do it, that means the next day you've gotta do what? You've gotta be two. Remember, I said one of the things we can't provide for you is your desire and your motivation. So is your desire to do it every day or is your desire to do it on the days that it's easy? You see, I know who you are, I know who you are. And I don't think there's a soul in this room that says, you know what, here's the deal. I wanna be an amazing husband on the days it's easy. <laughs> Nobody would go to a wedding where the groom or the bride says, you know what, on the good days, I do.
when it's convenient, <laughs> or when we're on vacation, or when we're at family reunion. I do. Everything else, I'll do my best. <laughs> Nobody would do that. So are you committed? If you erase, you got to replace. If you erase, you got to replace. And here's the deal. It will build. And so there's a, um, there's a term that a gentleman in, in the Northwest, his name is Anton, um, he mentioned, this is where I learned it from, um, Anton Stettner. He said, listen, have you ever heard of habit stacking? And you take a habit and stack another on it. You take a habit and stack another on it. And each of you know in your soul that when you take a habit and you do it, what, becomes, what, what happens after that? Doesn't the next habit become easier? And all of a sudden, you knock down one thing, and the next thing becomes easier. Gary and Jay talk about it in the one thing. A domino could knock over a domino up to about one and a half times the one that it started with. And you know that in your soul. You know it. I need you to practice it in your actions. Are you with me on this? You see, you know these things. You know them. You know them here in your head. Do you know them in your heart? And in your heart is where the habits live. The habits don't live in your mind. They live in your heart. Are you purposeful or are you committed? And you know, it's been said before that the, lar the longest distance you may ever travel is from your head to your heart. Step three, follow up Wednesdays. Now, I dig follow up Wednesdays. Now, if you're doing enough of step one, one listing appointment set per, per day, then sooner or later, what's gonna happen on Wednesdays is you have a tremendous amount of follow up. Now, follow up Wednesdays, Wednesdays look like this. This is where you follow up on old leads or old prospects, because they're not always leads. We call leads leads when they're really not leads. Sometimes they're suspects. <laughs> and, well, yeah. and they move from being a suspect to a prospect to a lead. And you gotta get real clear in your brain about what that looks like, which is which, and they're all three fantastic. There are no bad leads. There is not a bad lead under the sun, nowhere. There is an unmotivated person that you're calling a lead. Are you with me on this? They're not bad leads, not at all. Now, this is where you call people that are three, six, 12 weeks past, uh, 15 weeks past. Now, if you're anything like me, sometimes on the first contact, do you use your best script? I would. Yeah, of course I would. It's like, I'm wearing my nicest shirt on a first date. Like, I'm not stupid, I'm gonna do that. Then on the second contact, you use your second best script that usually works for you when the first script didn't work for you. The challenge, though, is that when you go deeper than one or two or maybe three contacts, do you ever feel like you've run out of amazing things to say? I want to give you an easy, simple script you can use forever. There's only a little bit of, a, a little bit of it on here, so you're going to want to write it down. I just wanted to call and follow up since it's Wednesday. If you need anything real estate related this week, would you please give me a call? How many of you can say that every single day? Say I. I just wanted to call and follow up, especially since it's Wednesday. If you need anything real estate related, please give me a call. And by the way, if you want to add something, you might say, oh, by the way, you know, if you're calling for sale by owners, uh, we've sold three homes um, in the neighborhood this past week, and I'd love to make yours the next. Call me if you need anything. Just want to call and follow up. Call me if you need anything. Call me if you need anything. Here's what happens. Over time, you know that follow-up wins this game. You know it. You know it. Remember, lead generation can, can find a sale. Lead follow-up can find a business. And you're going to have to do both to win at this. Now, lead generation is like picking up rocks and looking under rocks for sales. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're turning over rocks and you're finding sales, and it's awesome. And if you need a sale right now today, you're probably lead generating. If you'd like a business at some point, you're going to have to do follow-up. You're going to have to. And so you've got to have some great scripts, because here's what I find. You give up before they're ready. And you know that. You know that. You would tell somebody, you would tell a brand new agent, they go, well, you know, what should I do? You're going to say, well, you should do these things and follow up. And then keep following up and keep following up. What I want you to do is I want you to start taking your own advice. You know, my, my, my very favorite saying is, take my advice. I'm not using it anyway. Be careful with that. And by the way, there's not a person in this room, you're, me included, who hasn't been guilty of that. Now, when I really got this, man, when I really got this, I was working with our top listing agent back in Portland in our hub, and Charlie was showing me some notes. Now, uh, we use Boomtown in, in all of our cities, and he was showing me some notes in Boomtown, and he was going through, and the note said, uh, first contact uh, for sale by owner. Uh, wrote some notes, and the contact kind of blew him off, so he wrote that. Second contact, called left message. Third contact called left message for 15 weeks. For 15 weeks, called left message, called left message, called left message. And it was all, hey, just wanted to call and follow up. Uh, if you need anything real estate related, let me know. On week 14 or 15, I forget which week it was, the note said this, and he said, look at this. And the note said this, prospect called me back, said, I'm so sorry I've been blowing you off for so many weeks. Obviously, you're committed. Will you come and list my house? 
and it was a five dollars or $600,000 listing, certainly worth taking. Not too long ago, he shared with me that one of the listings he took, he'd been following up on for 25 months. That's a lot of weeks. And I would never try to do that kind of math in front of a room this large. <laughs> now, 3% and 6%, I'm your man. <laughs> Any other math gets a little dicey. I'm just like you. The rest of it, I'm not real sure. 3%, 6%, in my sleep, upside down, backwards, forwards, I'm your man at 3% and 6%. Now, the deal is this, though. I just wanted to call and follow up. Just wanted to call and follow up. You need anything real estate related. And by the way, you're never going to sound scripty, even though it is. You're never gonna sound salesy, even though it will lead to plenty of them. And it's something that you can do over and over and over and over and over again. And you know it, you know, when I'm saying this, you're writing it down going, oh, that's so simple. Ah. And like, you're looking at the note and you're like, yeah, of course, I could have taught that. I know, I know, nothing special. It's just a matter of putting it together and never giving up. Now, the next step you could boost. So keep that in mind and we'll come back to it in just a moment. So step number four is I want you to post one I have a buyer message per week. Now this is where we use something like social media. Now how many of you use social media for business? Say I. And social media is fantastic. Now there's all kinds of mediums for social media, though we're just gonna pick on Facebook for a second. So we're just gonna pick on Facebook for a second. Uh, that tends to be the king of social media today, at least in our industry. The challenge though is that so many people are posting on Facebook and they're saying things like, um, hey, the market is fantastic. Have you ever thought of investing in real estate? Contact me. Oh, perfect, Scooter, I'll give you a call. And no offense, or an agent will post on there, and I wish, if I could have my, if I could have my wish, I'd have all 4,500 of you in this room stop doing this post. Oh my gosh, the market is crazy. Things are selling like mad. I just listed a home and I had seven offers in a day. There's really only two people that care about that post, your spouse and your mom. Because it doesn't tell a story, it doesn't tell a story that's compelling to your database or the database you'd like to be in front of. Now, the story that a seller wants to hear is that you have the what? You have the buyers. The story that a buyer wants to hear is that you have the what? You have the listings or the sellers. So I know that we tell stories sometimes because we want to look good and we want to be right. I get that. Though I want you to begin telling the stories that they want to hear. And it will be the ones that are counterintuitive. They don't care that there was 14 offers on a home. They truly don't, because they care about only things that affect them. And they're not wrong, because you're the same way and I'm the same way. So what I want you to do is I want you to do a post every single week um, on Facebook that looks something like this. Um, I'm working with Mr. or Mrs. L for a home in XYZ area or XYZ price, something specific. Do you know anyone or who do you know or private message me or whatever? The key is it must be specific. It must be what? Specific. So you could do a, a specific family one week. You could do, hey, they've got three kids and they want to live in XYZ school district one week. You could do, um, they want to live next to XYZ campus or XYZ big plant or big manufacturing or whatever. You can do any of that week after week after week. It's got to be specific. Now, here's what's going to happen. You might find a home for your buyer. That's a fact. You might. Somebody will, if you do this every week, someone's going to say, oh my gosh, you know what? My, my, my crazy Uncle Larry has that house and you should call my crazy Uncle Larry and, 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 and he wants to sell it. Perfect. You might find a buyer for that, or a house for that buyer. What you will be doing though is you'll be telling the story over and over and over again that you seem to have all the what? You seem to have all the buyers. Now, this is something for all my bold students in the room. This is familiar to you because we teach how Tony DeCello did something like this for years in his business. We've just moved it into social media to do it this way. And then of course you can boost it and all the things like that. Now, if you're going to do this, if you're gonna do it, um, I want you to do it with some, uh, with some strategy, right? You might as well be strategic about it. So the best time to post something like this for B2C, which is business to consumer, is going to be between one o'clock and three o'clock on Wednesdays. If you look online, it will tell you that there's more eyeballs, about 20 to 22% uptick in eyeballs on this kind of activity just after lunch on Wednesdays. So you might as well do it just after lunch on Wednesdays. Now, if you would like to take a break from that or do it different or you forget, by the way, it works with follow-up Wednesdays very well, easy to remember, then on Saturday, it would be late morning, like maybe uh, 10 or 11 on Saturday or late morning on Sunday might be 11 o'clock to noon or 11 o'clock to one. And so you can mix it up a little bit. If you're going to do it, you might as well do it then instead of on Monday night when you go, oh yeah, 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 that post I gotta do and you throw it on there at seven o'clock and maybe there's less people looking. So you might as well do it when there's an uptick of eyeballs, there's more people. You might as well get the most bang for the buck on this. Now, 
Here's some examples of, of some strategic Facebook posts. So if you look in the middle, this is, uh, this is Regan. Regan is one of our expansion partners in the Twin Cities area. So you can see, hey, uh, hey friends, uh, looking for blah, 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 Wallace family. I love that because it gives a heart to it. It's a family, Wallace family. Now these areas, Rogers, STMA, Ostego. Uh, do we have anybody from the Twin Cities in here? Yeah, nobody. And so what happens is, Six of us. Uh, so what happened? Like they probably know where this is. I don't, though. The people looking at Regan's page would know, and they go, "Oh, I know somebody in that area." Do you know of anybody looking around those areas to, to sell? Would you private message me? Uh, Regan had two or three uh, people inbox her that week, saying, "Hey, you know, kind of this or kind of that. Would this fit or would that fit?" Now, could you imagine that might turn into a sale that week? What does it turn into with week after week after week? Are you with me on this? This is time on task over time, just like Gary teaches us. Now, step number five is every seller every week. Now, by the way, that, that previous step, you could take that, put it on a business page, and then boost it for just literally pennies or dollars, not even, that very, not even very much money, very, very little money. Uh, step number five is every seller every week. You know what's interesting? Gary shared at Mega Camp, and I'll see if I can get the, the number right. Um, he said about 78 or 80%, it was real close to that, some of you might know the exact number, about 80% of all agents active today have never sold homes in a buyer's market. That our, that our real estate agent bucket refreshes enough and flushes enough that only about one in five have ever sold in a buyer's market. And so only about one in five agents ever really today knows what it looks like to sell in a market where you've got listings that sit on the market for a while. You see, some of us, we've been so spoiled the last number of years that we put a home on the market, and as long as it's not grossly overpriced, we get activity pretty fast. Now, every seller every week means this. Listen, you've worked so hard and you do so much for these sellers to get them and to find them. You're gonna have to have a robust follow-up campaign and system to hang on to them because you might move back into a market where you have to have a seller for 10 or 12 or 14 weeks. Now the market's been giving you plenty of reason to follow up. In the market that we're coming out of, in most areas, you put a listing on, online, there's, there's, there's an offer, there's showings, there's open houses right away, there's activity, and then you're just, you're just responding and that gives you information to talk to the seller. You're gonna potentially move back into a market where all of a sudden you take a, you take a listing and you could go five or six weeks with not a whole lot of noise. And you better have a robust follow-up system. Now, if, if we're wrong about that, then you still have a robust system. If we're right about that, you might be the only one doing it. Are you with me on that? Now, Gary said this, and I would write it down. He said, you never, ever uh, prepare for the market that you're in. You only prepare for the market that you're going in. Again, you never prepare for the market that you're in because you're already there. You prepare only for the market that you're going into or only for the market that you're moving into. Listen, you work too hard for these listings, don't throw them away, don't throw them away. I want you to have a robust system to follow up week after week after week. By the way, um, this won't be on a slide, so I want you to write this down. My rule of thumb with this on step number five, my rule of thumb with this um, is the, um, the, the two by one, so two X one and the rule of three. So if you wanna write it down, it's the, the two X one, two by one and the rule of three. Here's my two X one or two by one in the rule of three. Two by, two by one means two different contacts per week. So two contacts per week. Now each of those contacts are specific. So contact one would be something electronic. That could be a text message, that could be a Facebook message, that could be an email. The challenge is it's very difficult to build relationship over those things. The other contact, the, other, the two, so the two by one every single week, the other one is voice to voice. Now voice to voice, that could be a phone call, it could be a voicemail if you have to, though we prefer an actual conversation or dialogue. And then the three, the rule of three, is every third week, I want the seller to come and meet with you at your office. Now if you have listings that are on the market for three weeks in most markets in our country, is it possible that the condition could use some work or that the price is a little bit high? Is that possible? Of course it's possible. You know that and they know that. Now, the easiest way to get your sellers to come to the office every three weeks, I want you to write this down. I want you to get it. The easiest way, I'll give you an absolute model that always works, is when you list the home, you tell them, every third week I'd like you to come into the office. If we haven't sold your home, every third week, I want you to come to the office and meet with me. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all the comparables in the market. We're gonna make sure together we haven't overlooked anything. Fair? And every seller is gonna say yes. 
And you're gonna say, great, we're also gonna talk about pricing. And if we need to have a price correction conversation, we will at that time. So just know every third week we're gonna be dealing with this if we haven't sold the home, is that fair? And when you do that, nine out of 10 sellers say no problem and they'll do it. Here's the deal, most plans work. Have you learned that? Most plans work. Of course, and the ones that don't, you capture the failure and turn it back into skill anyway. So that's the two by one and the rule of three. Now, step number six is um, do FISBO deals if you must. Now, for all the brokers in the room, uh, close your ears and go la 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 just for a second. Now, for all the agents in the room, do nothing without permission from the brokerage, fair? Do nothing without permission from the brokerage. What I've learned in this industry when it comes to these things, it is far better to say please than sorry. Let me say it again, it's better to say please than sorry. Are you with me on this? Now, forever, real estate agents have like been cut from this cloth where it's like, well, I'd rather ask, you know, I'd rather ask forgiveness than permission. Ah, I don't know about that. There's some things where it's better to say please than sorry. Now, the other thing is this. When I start saying do, fis uh, do FISBO deals if you must, so many people in the room start thinking about commission or money. I'm not even talking about commission or money. I'm certainly not talking about commissionectomies. That's not at all what I'm talking about. A FISBO deal could be a five-day listing agreement. You know, the first time I got this was when I listed it for sale by owner for the weekend. Now, am I in the business or am I excited about taking all my listings for two or three days? No. Though if I've been following up with a for sale by owner and they're telling me you're the one, you're the one, you're the one, I just don't know and I say, well, you know what, let's list it and if I don't have some activity by Monday or if you're not, if you're not convinced I'm the right realtor by then, then we can make a different decision. Did you know the, the, the first time I did that, what do you think happened on Monday? That seller said, you know what, you're the guy, you got it. And by the way, you might take a, you know, another deal might be, have you ever had a for sale by owner or any seller, even somebody out of your own sphere that says, well, you know, uh, my friend said they're going to buy the house. They haven't bought it yet. I'm sure they're going to buy it. And you're like, oh, I've seen this story play out before. I've seen this movie. And you say, great, we're going to exclude that name. We'll go ahead and list your house and we'll just exclude that name. That's a FISBO deal. I'm not even talking about money. Don't be afraid to get a little creative on this. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, if you do anything like this, just make sure you have permission first. You just make sure you have permission first. Now, the reality is if you're gonna do FISBO deals, if you're short of your goal, and if your goal is like, like I would say 10, if your goal is 10 listings per month, then you do whatever it takes to get there. Is that fair? You do whatever it takes within reason to get there. Now, let me tell you a story about an agent that I was coaching that um, had a goal of, of getting 10 listings in a month. And this agent was working hard, and the second, I forget if it was the second or the third month that we were coaching on this, the second or the third month, it was like the 20, um, gosh, the 28th of the month. And he calls me and he goes, oh, Cody, I've got eight listings. I'm so excited, man. I've never had eight listings before in a month. I'm so excited. I said, oh, that's so great. Uh, big old air high five, good job. By the way, what was the goal? He goes, oh, well, the goal was 10. I said, I know, so what are you gonna do? He goes, all right, so he pulls out um, his pipeline report. Now, at that time, it was on an Excel spreadsheet. Now, you have access to these tools through the CGI, which is fantastic, so go and use the CGI. So he's going through his pipeline report where he's got all of his potential sellers or potential leads, and they're numbered, like, you know, um, lowest to highest. All right, so, and we, we came up with this plan for the next day of, all right, if I have to get a listing tomorrow, who should I be talking to? In other words, there's always a deal to be had if you uncover it. So who should I be talking with? So he goes out the next day and he takes a listing. Oh, fantastic. He calls me that night and he goes, Cody, I've got nine listings. I'm so excited. I've never had nine listings in a month before. I said, oh, that's so great. Uh, air high five, good job. By the way, what was the goal? So oh, it was 10. I said, I know. I said, so what are you gonna do to get 10? He goes, well, you know, shoot, man. Um, I've gone through all of, my, um, all of my pipeline. I've called everybody that is even possibly gonna list I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I said, well, uh, we're gonna find out tomorrow if the goal of 10 was uh, truly your commitment or if it was just a hopeful wish. I said, by the way, you've got nine, so you've had a good month. It's just not the 10 that you committed to. The next day, his wife's driving home. She gets to the driveway, she goes into the driveway, and she looks over, and to her astonishment, there's a for sale sign in their front yard. <laughs> The goal was what? Yeah. 10 listings. He goes, baby, it's okay. We've listed this thing for twice what it's worth like most FISBOs do. Oh, sorry, just 
forget you have a mic on sometimes. We've listed this thing for twice what it's worth, and if anybody wants to buy it, we'll move. You know what, in two or three days, they took that sign down. You get my point, you get it, right? Though in the brain, what's he teaching himself? Man, I'm committed to 10 listings, I'm gonna take 10 listings. Here's what I've learned, I've learned that if you get in the habit of 10 listings a month, you'll begin to take 10 great listings, are you with me? Now the reality is this, you might even find out that on month three or month four, you take 10 listings and three of them weren't even that great, or four of them weren't even that great. That's okay if you're okay with that. Then you'll look down, you'll get in the habit of it. You know, you'll get in the habit of, well, I'm always taking 10 listings a month. I'm used to taking 10 listings a month. I, I get used to running at this speed. I'm used to this, and this makes sense to me. I have the, I have the inept, um, I have, excuse me, I have the systems and the processes already built in um, naturally to take 10 per month. I know what that looks like. I'm used to putting something in the MLS every couple days. And if I haven't put one in the MLS for a few days, I'm like, well, what's going on here? This is crazy. Some, the sky has fallen. Simply because you're used to it. And if you're used to taking one or two listings a month, then that becomes your success formula, and that's what you apply to everything, and it becomes normal to you. You know, it's not that much different than how we sometimes get used to living without a certain amount of money. And have you ever thought before that sometimes you get so used to living without a certain amount of money that that very mindset is what sometimes keeps you from earning a certain amount of money? And subconsciously you think, well, you know what, I'm okay. I've got a roof to sleep under, I've got clothes and I've got food, so everything must be okay. I don't need anything else. And then you share with your coach the goals and the dreams and the hopes that you have, and I promise you they always come at a higher price tag than what you can currently write the check for. I know that. So you get in the habit of it, then you take, you look down one day and you go, whoa, 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 baby, I've taken 10 great listings. Then you look down one day and you go, whoa, 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 I've taken 10 listings that will sell this month. And you know what, Gary says in the one thing that success is sequential, it's not simultaneous. And this is sequential, it's one thing and then another and then another and all of a sudden you just stack it and stack it and stack it and maybe it takes you a year to where you're taking 10 listings every month. In fact, how many of you would be okay if by next family reunion you've worked on, worked on and worked on this kind of a model and you've had your ups and downs, goods and bads and by this time next year you're in the habit of taking 10 listings a month, month after month after month, say I. Of course. So again, how, does it matter how long it takes? It probably doesn't. If you're making progress and it's constant and never-ending improvement, then who cares how long it takes? That's irrelevant, man. Again, in my life, it usually takes longer than I thought it would. It just usually does. Now, step number seven is practicing the presentation weekly. This is the other eye roller that we get in the room, and here's what I mean. People go, oh my gosh, practice every week, blah, 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 blah. Practice, practice. I know. I get it, I get it. Here's what usually happens though. What usually happens is an agent will practice a presentation or their version of practice was they went out and they, they, they shot from the hip and they got a listing. So then the next time they go out, they say the same kind of thing. Do you get me? And all of a sudden that becomes their success formula and then they apply it to everything. Just because it worked one time does not make it a good model. Just because your cousin listed their home with you using that script does not mean that that's the script to go and take 10 listings per month. Do you get it? Of course you do. And so there's not a person in this room that would tell you, you know what, you shouldn't have a great presentation, you shouldn't have a great listing presentation. Nobody will say that. I know that. Though the reality is this, do you have a process or a system to achieve it? Now here's what I've also learned. You could practice that presentation, practice that presentation and practice it and get really, really good. In fact, um, when I first started in real estate, the, the, first, uh, the first sales manager I ever had said, all right, Cody, uh, it was at a, I've been at two companies, Keller Williams, which I'll likely die at, and the company I was at before this one. And the company I was at before this one said, great, here's your first day, here's a desk, here's a phone, here's a, a coffee cup full of pencils, here's a phone book, have a nice day. I was 19 and said, okay, perfect. Here's what happened. A couple of hours later, because I came in at eight that morning, I was 19, so I thought it was a what? I thought it was a job, so I showed up at eight. That's weird. The loneliest place on the planet is a real estate office at eight. <laughs> Here's the deal, I want you to practice every single week because that's a systematic process you can hold true to for a career. You see, an amateur will practice something until they get it right, and a professional will practice something until they can't get it wrong. Do you get me? 
Now you think about that game-winning drive. Now, if only the Seahawks could have been playing. And they weren't. You think about this game-winning drive, and you think about the practice that goes into it. Did you know that an NFL team will practice game-winning drives over and over and over? Like, you get that, right? Like, that makes sense. Did you know that they never practice it where they don't win? Did you know they never practice a game-winning drive that ends with no scoring? In other words, they always practice and what? And they win, so they're used to that, meaning that's their expectation. What's your expectation? I want you to apply that principle to what you do in your practice, in your playtime. Now, the reality is this. When you're giving a presentation to a seller, that shouldn't be practice time. That's playtime. You see, an NFL player does not get paid necessarily for what they do on Sunday morning at the game. They get paid for who they are that earns them the right for the field on Sunday morning. Are you with me on this? And you, too, get paid for that. Now, you think about it. You go, well, Cody, that's a great analogy, and it's a sports analogy, and I like basketball better. Well, so do I. And so what happens is this, you think about basketball. Now in the city that you live in, it probably looks just like the city I live in. And the city that you live in, is it possible that there's a Monday or Tuesday night like a men's basketball league, is that possible? Or a ladies basketball league on Monday or Tuesday night, of course. And it's like an amateur league, right? Is there, is there also a professional basketball team in your city or somewhere in your state or close by? Of course. Is it the same game? Yes. Is it played differently? Yes. Are both players compensated differently? Oh yes, are you getting me on this? And I want you to be the one that's the professional, meaning you practice it till you can't get it wrong. You see, I think that you have the time in your calendar every week to practice 35 or 40 minutes. I don't think you have the time to practice six hours. I remember the first listing appointment I went on, man, I practiced all day for that bad chicken. All day I practiced. And I can't keep that model up and neither can you. Though the reality is if you practice this week for a half hour or 40 minutes, you're gonna be better than last week. You won't be that much better. When you practice again next week though, now we're habit stacking. You'll be a little bit better. And the week after that, you'll do it again. You're getting my point. You'll look down in a year or two and you're gonna say, wow, I'm amazing at that. This is fantastic, I'm great with this. And you'll look down and realize I've become amazing at this because I allowed it the time not because I insisted on the result. Do you see the difference? Some of you are doing all the right things. We're just so impatient sometimes, we don't allow the time to show up to give us what we're looking for. And I think you've got the time for 35 or 40 minutes every week. And you think about a catch like this. Do you realize that when this receiver reaches out over the sideline, there is no time in the mind to say, okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Get the defender off my back, uh, reach over, smile because my mom's watching, drag my feet, and stay in bounds. You realize there's no time for that, right? This is all built on muscle memory, right? This is all built on, I've caught this pass a thousand times, a thousand times, a thousand times. This is what I do over and over and over and over again. And that's what your presentations look like. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I would tell you this, amazing world-class customer service is knowing your presentation. So that you're not waiting for what you're gonna say next. You can intently listen and provide service to them. I believe in my heart, in this room, in these four walls, that amazing customer service is lead generation, and amazing customer service is having a professional, fantastic presentation. None of you want a surgeon who's gonna wing it. Though some of you have been willing to practice real estate surgery by winging it. And I'll bet you that the compensation tells the truth. Now, the seven steps, again, were number one, make one listing appointment per day. Number two, call a FISBO uh, or expired listing each day, or better yet, visit their door. Follow up Wednesdays, post the I have a buyer message per week. Every seller, every week, we talked about that. Uh, FISBO deals if you must, or something similar to that. We just use FISBO as a placeholder. You can insert here what you want. And practice the presentation weekly. Uh, we always want to come from contribution. And so we have two downloads that you can um, download for free from today. Uh, you go to the seven steps downloads.wordpress.com. We're giving you the seller survey and the agent interview that we use. Now, by the way, uh, both of these originally for me came from Diana Kokoska. They were fantastic. We took, this, we took them, we, we made them our own, and then we use them. I think you ought to take ours, make them your own, and use them. You're gonna customize them, of course you would. Did you know that for the first few months that we had Portland Real Estate Group on our seller survey, the middle question said, are you aware that the Kokoska Group sells 200 homes per year? 
That's how good our R&D department is, which stands for rip off and duplicate. And I think yours should too. So all I ask, gang, is all I ask is that when you make these better, send them back to us so we can learn from you too. There's nobody out here who has it figured out. And if someone tells you that they do, they're lying or they're deceived. Nobody has it figured out. We learn from you, you learn from us. It's okay. I took Diana's and I made them this. Take this and make them yours. It's okay. I do want to give credit to, to where credit is due, and I do appreciate who digs the well when I drink the water. <laughs>